Tonight's show was sponsored by Jacob's Cream Crackers. <laughs> An all-new TV Nightmares 3 after the break. Honey, where's me dinner? Oh, coming. Could you get that, love? Oh, all right. Phone's ringing. <gasps> Blast! Missed it. Catch up on Coronation Street in Emmerdale weeknights oh. now from ten on ITV2. Murder a copper. Gives me an idea. This tastes funny. What the heck did you put in it? Peace at last. ITV2, a free new channel available on digital, terrestrial, and cable TV. Call now. Ah, weißt du, einfach Berlin wäre sehr viel kürzer, ja? Nein, bei Ihnen München. Extra time. Soy yo del Real Madrid. No seré yo del Real. The UEFA Champions League. It matters. See it all only with On Digital. Don't miss a single game. Get your free box today. Just think, Dave. You could still be playing Sunday League football if it wasn't for your bad knee. Well, give Bootler a call. You can be seen in next to no time. <laughs> but I'm not a member. Well, you don't have to be. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's only one goal in it, Barry. Booper Hospitals offer fixed price treatment to everyone. Call 0800 00 1010. Don't miss the free professional photograph worth up to £50 with the news of the world. Offer starts this weekend. It's what Sundays are all about. On Digital is the only place to see every single UEFA Champions League match. So how do you get on Digital? Go to your local electrical retailer, pick up your free set dot box, take it home, plug it in and install it yourself. And now you're ready to see the best of Britain against the best teams in Europe. Oh no! You forgot the pizzas! The UEFA Champions League. It matters. Don't miss a single game. ITV and ITV2 bring you every single game of the Rugby World Cup, live. Sylvester Stallone. Send the maniac to catch me. Sandra Bullock. The year is 2032. Wesley Snipes. I'm a blast from the past. Excuse me, Rambo. I regret this the rest of your life. Both seconds. Starring Sylvester Stallone, ITV Tonight, 1020, Demolition Man. Now on LWT, an all-new collection of moments the stars would rather forget, revealed in TV Nightmares 3. of TV Nightmares, where you have a chance to sit back and enjoy other people's worst moments on television. We've uncovered more long-forgotten footage that certain stars had hoped would lay buried forever. Also, Melinda Messenger and Matthew Kelly will be reliving their own personal TV nightmares right here in the studio, and I'll be experiencing a nightmare of my own as I try to interview the puppet from hell called Agro, who makes Chucky from the movie Child's Play look like Tinky Winky. But it's not just <laughs> television stars who are about to be haunted by their past. If you're thinking of a career in politics, these nightmares may convince you to change your mind. <laughs> In Taiwan, politicians have a unique way of expressing their opposition. Here it comes again in glorious slow motion. And that hat's just gotta go.
Check out funky Senator Bob Dole's stage diving. Guys, I'm supposed to catch him. Bonbo has been producing tank. Dennis Healy never missed a chance for a pop at dear old Maggie. Uh, it has an unrivaled record of excellence. But we uh, can't even yeah. under Thatcher keep the electricity going. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in America... A word about the president. For seven and a half years, I've worked alongside him, and I'm proud to have been his partner. And we've had triumphs. We've made some mistakes. We've had some sex setbacks. Sometimes I feel like the... Uh... Presenters who work on live television are usually highly paid, highly stressed and highly trained individuals who can handle any broadcasting hiccups with seeming ease, or so GMTV's Stephen Jardine thought. As you'll see, no amount of training could have saved his poor, wretched soul from this TV hell. My worst TV nightmare was right here on the famous GMTV sofa. Now, what you need to know to appreciate this story are a few things. It was my first time presenting the programme. I'd only joined GMTV a few weeks before, so this was my first time standing in for Eamon. It had been a very stormy night overnight, so everyone was concerned that things wouldn't work properly. And also, I'd been up since 3 a.m., pacing the floor, nervous about my first time on GMTV, and not really paying attention to the fact that it was the 1st of April, which is very important to this story. <laughs> Good morning, it's Good Friday, April the 1st. I'm Stephen Jardine. Our top the first few seconds are fine, everything's going OK, but I'm very nervous. And then all of a sudden, the studio lights start to flicker. Also this morning, a crucial weekend in the Premiership with Manchester United and Blackburn Rovers <laughs> the top game tomorrow. Sorry, the lights seem to have gone down. Clearly, the weather's getting to us at the moment. Um... The director's really panicking this by this time. He's saying, just, you know, just ad-lib, just keep going. Throw to the weather, throw to the weather, he says. We're going to try and have a look at the weather forecast now with Charlie. <laughs> we seem to have lost the weather, unfortunately, as well. Clearly, unfortunately, <laughs> we're being hit by the terrible weather affecting the southeast of England at the moment. Southern Britain has been suffering with the wind throughout the night. <laughs> South Wales and the southwest of England have had gusts of up to 80 miles an hour earlier in the night. Those strong gusts are now tracking across the country. Let's go on to our top news story this morning. A look at the camera. Autocue has now disappeared as well. So the director's screaming in my ear, just try and keep ad-libbing, just try and keep going, but I can't see my script, I can't see anything in the darkness at all. Then all of a sudden he says in my ear, everything's okay, just look at the camera. And I look at the camera and the autocue says that. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> you complete and utter <laughs> bastard. <laughs> I suddenly realised they'd changed all the clocks in the studio, all the clocks in the newsroom, all the clocks in the whole building had been put five minutes forward just to convince me that it was six o'clock when it was only actually five to six and we weren't on air at all. <laughs> I'll get you an April Fool. See you. <laughs> of course, everyone thought it was really, really funny except me, but I didn't walk off. I came back and did the programme because I suddenly realised it was the best possible thing that could have happened to me. All my nerves disappeared in that split second. But I must admit, since then, on April the 1st, if GMTV needs someone to sit on that sofa, I'm always on holiday. And another thing, <laughs> straight afterwards, it had to be taken away and dry cleaned. <laughs> Treat. It's not often you get nightmares that look this good. She's one of the brightest new stars on television. She's lovely, she's funny. She is Melinda Messenger! <laughs> Melinda, 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 welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, very, very successful photographic career, now a successful TV presenter. You have now become a guest that everybody wants on their show. And one of those appearances as a guest turned into a bit of a nightmare, didn't it? It did, yes. Let's take a look. Okay. Here we go. Melinda oh. Messenger. 
the fine art critic studying Russian, and you're currently on your 16-week documentary about Kandinsky. Any good or not? I don't care, Melinda, because you're just so kooky. <laughs> <laughs> but, Melinda, true or false, Pontius Pilate was a Scot. <laughs> I'd say false. It's true, true. Melinda! Oh, unlucky Melinda. Ulrika, Melinda, oh, is that microphone all right for you tonight? <laughs> <laughs> You've got no worries with that. <laughs> and your drink's all right there. <laughs> Vic's a bit of a fan, then, is he? Oh, yes, and as you can see, I learnt my lesson. Hi, next from now on in. So, so, why, <laughs> so why, was that, why was that a nightmare, then? Uh, well, he was looking straight down my top, and I didn't have my vest on that night, either, so that was a bit embarrassing. <laughs> but, uh, but you've also coped with, uh, with unwanted admiration from a puppet, haven't you? I have, yes. Could you tell us about that? I could, yes. I uh, was a guest on the David Straussman show, and he basically got up... He had a puppet, the, uh, and basically the puppet did the interview. David got up and left me alone with this puppet in front of an audience full of people and I had no idea what was going to happen next. It was very frightening. Shall we see? Yes, please. Let's have a look. Please, no, oh, David. I'm tired of his little no. attitude here. Go ahead, Chuck. Be funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you can pick up your shit in the driveway. <laughs> Just right back. This is going to be a really interesting interview, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh don't know what to say. I mean, what can I tell you? <laughs> She's talking to a puppet. <laughs> Is he gone, Melinda? Don't say that word around me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said it, actually, but it's too late. I love you. <laughs> Melinda, can you help me? What's that? Well, I've never been with a girl before. I, I can't really say that I'm that surprised. Yeah? <laughs> I think she's easy, folks. <laughs> oh, no. Do you, do you like bird impressions? Do I like bird impressions? Yeah. Well, I'm sure you're going to uh, show me a good one, so go on. Want to see my woodpecker? <laughs> with me. Oh. <laughs> what an ad -lib. Oh. Fantastic. The scary thing is I had absolutely no idea he was going to leave me alone. I had no idea at all. Now, I think you've coped very well with nightmares as a guest, but you've also had nightmares as a host. Now, you do a show for Channel 5 called... What's the show called? It's called Can We Still Be Friends? Yeah, and, and, it's, and it... the nightmare we're about to see, tell us about that. Well, basically, the show is um, it's a kind of a dating game, but it's for ex-couples, and I ask questions to both couples, um, and each one doesn't know how the other one is going to respond, and neither do I, as uh, you'll probably find out. <laughs> <laughs> Question four is to you, Susie. Who did Dale think of in bed? Was it A, Demi Moore, B, Patrick Moore, <laughs> C, Pamela Anderson, or D, somebody else? Uh... Who do you think it was? I want to say Melinda Messenger. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Pamela, Anderson. <laughs> Pamela Anderson. Well, let's have a look and see what he said. When I was in bed with Susie, I used to think of Melinda Messenger. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea who's going to say that, do you? I have no idea, but the whole of the production team did know, and of course they uh, fell about laughing afterwards. Now, a little birdie tells me, and the audience here and the viewers watching at home are never going to forget the night they saw Melinda Messenger do this. Apparently, you have a unique style of after dinner speaking. Oh dear. <laughs> Who's told you this? Perhaps you could show us, oh, Melinda. No, 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 my dad will never forgive me. Yeah, because your dad doesn't like you doing this. No, does he? my dad does he not like me doing this. He certainly doesn't like you doing this oh, in this front of so 13 million people. <laughs> so let's just. You're not going to make me. Let's give you a name to say. Can you say, well, say Steve Pank for us? Okay, I do apologise beforehand to everybody for this. This is Melinda Messenger, okay. everybody doing <clears> this. <throat> Steve Pank. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so sexy. 
TV nightmares? Can you say TV nightmares? Oh, for I, us? Don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's go a bit it. long. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're, this we're could waiting. be very unpleasant, but I'll give it a go. Is your dad watching? He is, unfortunately, right. and he's going to hate me. Right. TV nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Presenting looks easy, doesn't it? Well, to start with, you get the best seats at the game and you get to meet all your sporting heroes. You also get a chance to really annoy them. Very disappointing. Uh, I was nearly as disappointed when you interrupted me whilst I was working as well. Would you like me walking into a news broadcast while you're talking? I'm back to my job. Did you? Did you? No, don't do your, when, you do, when you interfere with me, you're not doing your job properly. Yes, I'm disappointed, obviously. Very, very disappointed. But the game's not over yet. Whilst it's live, this hope. Thank you. Well, they've joined us live from LA and Melbourne. Is there anything you'd like to say to them? Hi, guys, and congratulations. Now, Michael, what's the general feeling over there at the moment? Well, actually, I'm freezing my balls off, really. But... <laughs> Golden rule of sports presenting, never try a live link in the middle of an excitable crowd. <laughs> Especially if you're in Paris when France have just won the World Cup. Quaid is available to be spoken to, and he's with Bobby Skilton up in Sydney. Well, from the moment the Sydney Swans decided to move to Sydney, there has been nothing but... <laughs> and we'll be back with him in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Actually, what we did, we told Bobby to hurry it up. And, uh, <laughs> it is a little too quickly. Gary. Hello, ITV's Gary Newborn has jumped the queue and snatched a chat with our Insee from right under an Italian interviewer's nose. Uh, give us the trip we needed. Well done, Paul Insee. Well done, everybody. We're happy for the nation. We've done it for the nation. Thank you very much. Oh, Cheers, Gary. Cheers, Love Gary. you, Bye -bye. Bye -bye. No, you don't no, do that. Eh? You don't it's, a, do that. It's, it's our interview. It's our Well, there's a first. An Italian putting up a fight. I didn't know who you were. 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 He didn't know who he was, OK? He didn't know who he was. <laughs> right, still to come, Jeremy Clarkson with a mile-high experience he'd rather forget. <laughs> and Matthew Kelly wearing a loincloth that brought stars to his eyes. <laughs> Almost time for a break, but before that, we've had the sporting nightmares, so let's now cross to Michael Wilson for the weather. Well, my personal TV nightmare was working at GMTV and Sally Mean, the weather girl, was ill. And uh, they said to me right at the last moment, would you do the weather? And I said, yeah, it's no problem. Easy, isn't it? Wave your hands at a screen. A few bits of cloud, no problem. Most areas can expect some rain or drizzle. There it all is. The, the southwest... Some dry spells. Northern, I'm sure everybody knows how it works, but what you're actually doing is you are standing in front of a blank screen. The technology projects a map behind you. What I'm doing is looking down at a little television screen, seeing the finished product, seeing what the viewer actually sees. And my hands are moving all over the place, and it's very, very difficult, unless you've done it, to actually get it all coordinated. And I did not get it coordinated at all. <laughs> there would be an odd shower appearing along the East Coast. There it is. <laughs> Cloud will bring drizzle to the west of Ireland. A cool night in most So basically, at the end of it, I was all over the place. I'd got no idea where I was, what was happening to the weather anywhere in the British Isles. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, even for a professional forecaster like Isabel Lang, doing the weather's not always a doddle. A touch of ground frost in the north. Oops. Um, I'm trapped, <laughs> but behind me is a weather system that will be coming in during tomorrow, and that looks set. <laughs> Shut up, Sophie. And that looks set to bring us some rain, especially to western and northern areas. I will free myself at five to nine. Thank goodness for that. How on earth did that happen? Got what happened to you, Isabel? <laughs> Don't. I've got my thing trapped under my box. <laughs> 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 
very good evening to you and just about everything across calendar land today. There was above half an inch of rain reported in Leeds. There was fog along the east coast, but still a reasonable evening. <laughs> and we light and from the north. If we go overnight, well, it looks as though there'll be very little wet. No, sorry. I've bolted it up. Standing very, very close to that position now, the, the water. And as you can see, I... Last off of a more technical nature, and GMTV was there to cover the historic countdown. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, whenever you're ready, do the countdown. Right. Okay, the countdown is starting now. Just a minute. Oh. Okay. What was that, James? Okay, we're firing in about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Stand by! Here we go. Count counting down now. I'm very excited. I'm actually quite scared, to be honest, as well. I'm just going close to the built by Jacob Packer and Alan Bunnock to um, pharmaceutical lunatics. Whatever you're ready. Intend to make British history in a matter yeah. of seconds. There will be a countdown. Not sure from what. Any second now. Uh, could be a countdown from ten. Could be. Could be a countdown from five hundred and six at the moment. <laughs> Is there any ignition problem, Jago? Uh, it's um, occasionally the bulb is it? Okay. Just, just okay. Just everyone getting nervous. Okay. A lot of nerves. The smell of fear is dense in the air, indeed. <laughs> Will there be a countdown, Jago? Yes, there'll definitely be a countdown. All Alan's doing at the moment is basically okay, just checking. Okay. Everybody okay. Is on this channel. Okay. Five. Four, three, two, two one. one. Fire. Oh, Jago, Jago. We've had a Jago blown up. <laughs> Upset, surely. Yeah, extremely. <laughs> When you're a presenter, you appreciate your production team and the fact that they're always 100% behind you. Isn't that right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! These people become more like the family and they really hate to see you mess up or make a fool of yourself on screen. Isn't that right, guys? Guys? <laughs> mm. Now I know exactly how Gene Pitney must have felt. Now, as promised, Gene Pitney, who obviously makes a habit of freezing for his art, <laughs> singing for you his latest hit, You're the Reason. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> All day long <laughs> I thought show beside me <laughs> Close my eyes it wasn't Gene Pitney's fault at all. It was our, it was not our fault, but it was the programme's fault. Because he, he was miming on that day, because he was singing outside and the sound wasn't very good. So he was miming to his, his backing track. And uh, who was the sound engineer? What's he called? Helen. Helen. Helen on sound, who isn't with us anymore, but that's not why. <laughs> <laughs> she forgot to put, put the plug in the back of the loudspeaker so he could hear his words. So all the audience and everybody, and in the technical gallery, which was half a mile away from, the, from that set where we were, we were shooting live, they could hear the song, but he couldn't and well, we he couldn't. couldn't. <laughs> Robert Hall called in to see Tams and Olivier in York this afternoon. From the moment Tams and Olivier arrived in York today, it was obvious that she'll have great difficulty in remaining just a member of Rebecca's class. I'm flattered by the interest. I wish it was... Well, that was Tams and Olivier. Before that, we saw an unscheduled appearance by the backsides of various members of our studio crew here. <laughs> so we'll take the break now. Here's a Sunday service, live from Liverpool. <laughs> Dougie, you're live, mate. <laughs> Hello, Dougie, you're live. <laughs> 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 
lots of signals. Seen up, you live, love. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. In actual fact, we were just uh, sorting ourselves out in the studio, but I would like thank to thank God for Gloria. <laughs> in Liverpool for that very interesting service. Eating my breakfast. Sorting <laughs> 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 yeah. me out. It looks very nice. You just get on. I'm I am so next hungry. Bit. You, you do this bit. I'm going to see what's uh, happening in your area. Our next guest started his life as a bath mat and rose from those lowly beginnings to become a major force in Australian television. He's achieved everything from being Australia's most controversial children's television presenter to hosting a late-night chat show for grown-ups. He's loud, he's opinionated, in fact, he's everything you dread when it comes to an absorbent bathroom floor covering. Please welcome all the way from Down Under, the aptly named Agro! Fine, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, uh, I am an Australian through and through, made from a bath mat. I've got ping pong balls for eyes with texture colour on them, and a uh, orange squash ball for a nose, and I think I come up pretty well, considering. I grow. you seem a little moth-eaten for a major TV superstar. Oh, really? Have you looked in the mirror lately? Huh? The only difference between you and me is where the hand is. Easy boy, easy boy. I've <laughs> heard from our sources down under that you're, uh, you're difficult to work with and that you create TV nightmares for your co-presenters. Well, why do you think I'm called aggro? I, I mean, if I was called friendly, I'd be nice to them, wouldn't I? But I'm aggro. <laughs> People expect it from me. And in this clip, oh, let me tell you, the most beautiful woman in the world, Teresa Livingston, uh, has a problem. Uh, she can't stand sardines. She can't stand the smell of them, the look of them, or she can't stand, as I found out, people talking about them. Oh, boy, has she got a touchy stomach. Check it out, I make her suffer. Oh. And you mush them up, you mush them up, you mush them up, you mush them up. And you get them in your teeth, you get them in your teeth, and you go, Stop it! Agro, it's not funny. And then you go, Because if I throw up, and then you breathe on some and you go, oh, lovely sardines. Stop it. Mushy, mushy sardines. Mushy, oily, mushy. <laughs> Don't, it's not funny. Mushy, oily sardines. Don't. With runny eggs and Please. greasy bacon. <laughs> I'm too good. I'm just too good. <laughs> Agro, you're not exactly a sweet little TV puppet, are you? I mean, our British puppets are renowned. You know, they're loved for their cute loveliness. Oh, yeah? Well, I'd like to see that mute dweeb Sooty host a late-night provocative adult chat show. <laughs> I mean, has Sooty ever tackled the issue of teenage pregnancy? Easy, boy, easy. Now, Agro, we've got a tip-off that, uh, that you've had your very own nightmare. One of your co-presenters got her own back. Is that, is that right? Oh, a tip-off! Oh, this'll be the snake thing, huh? Well, it wasn't me, it was the guy under the desk. I mean, he is absolutely, absolutely paranoid of snakes. And in this clip, you'll see, he can't move as the co-host takes her revenge. If uh, you're really what? concerned about wildlife... <laughs> Hang on! Uh, what? Just stay Hang on, I just... I, I have the to! sort of animals that you've got oh, to... Oh, no, not the snake again! You've got to look after. <laughs> A fellow's like Ben. It's hard to believe, I know, but you do have to look after him. Ben isn't harmless. He's a python. Python. He's been on... I just want to tell you folks at home yeah. that because I'm sitting like this, right, on top of the sofa, the guy in the box isn't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. But he wants to. No, I just want to, just, I want to get ready for this. I'll take my koala. No, off. don't you, Jill. I'm going to. No, stop. I've waited all year for this. Okay, Damien, can I have Ben? No, don't put it. Thank you very much. Jill, don't do <laughs> Jill! <laughs> Jill, don't do this! <laughs> she wants to say hello. She <laughs> said hello. Come on, man. Jill, don't do this! Oh, what a chicken. And he said he was interested in wildlife. <laughs> the set is moving. The set is moving. We had some arguments gone. Oh, I am 
seen some pathetic sights in my time, but his butt, your butt, <laughs> scampering off the set. Oh, that was just pathetic. Oh, please. Agro, unfortunately, we're almost out of time, but before we leave you, have you got an Agro exclusive for us? I'll give you an exclusive. If you want something for your show, I'll yeah, give it yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah, Here yeah. it is, ladies and gentlemen, live on television tonight, Agro Naked. Pathetic things I have ever seen on UK television. Are you kidding? I saw your last show. Yeah. I think I've just been insulted by a naked puppet. Well, you better get used to it, pal. I'm coming over. Hang on, I'll get back on my arm. Oh, Steve! Oh, thanks for sharing your TV nightmares, Agro. The face of an angel. Ladies and gentlemen, say thank you to Agro! Remember this. Yes, how could you forget the theme from Mastermind, music that terrified viewers as much as the contestants. Here for the first time on television, Magnus Magnusson tells the story of one of the most fascinating nightmares we've ever come across. The most memorable TV nightmare with which I was ever associated during my 25 years on Mastermind was a case of Susan Reynolds, a brilliant young Oxford undergraduate who failed terribly in the final in 1974. That was a case of a dream that really did turn out into the most terrible nightmare you can possibly imagine. And our fourth contender, please. She'd fairly waltzed through the early rounds. The first round, she took classical mythology just up her street, waltzed through that. Then in the semi-final, she took uh, the life and music of Wagner, and when they came to the final, she was the absolute odds-on favourite. Nobody would have bet against anybody else. She could not lose. On the day of the broadcast, about two hours before I was due to start, I was in the hotel getting changed, and this was early December and quite windy. The window was open, and I think there was a cross-draft between the window and the door. I was standing over by the wardrobe, which had a very large, heavy handle, bending down to fasten my shoe, when suddenly the door flew open and hit me, the handle, right over the eye like that, and knocked me out. Now, how long I was out for, I don't know. It can't have been more than a minute or two. But it left me feeling like my own ghost, just green and groggy and totally out of it. And I came round, splashed myself with cold water, rang for a taxi, and set off to face the music down at the studio where I think they thought I must have given up and run away. <laughs> and she arrived about six. It was an hour before the recording. She looked dreadful. I got a shock. She was as white as a sheet. Her hair was all dishevelled, she was a very neat girl, and she looked extraordinarily flustered, which she never did. What is your special subject this time? British ornithology. She went into makeup. Makeup had a hell of a job because there was this tremendous bruise developing on her forehead. What's the popular name for the bony structure called the forcula? Pope's nose. No, it's a wishbone. What British bird has the most feathers? Pass. What flightless bird was found in Britain in historic times? Kiwi. No, the great... Author. It had that nightmare quality of unreality, Nightjar, where you can't focus. I could see two Magnus Magnusons, and one would be enough for most people. I couldn't focus <laughs> mentally either, and that was worse. I was missing questions I knew perfectly well, like badly dropped catches in a ball game. Who was the curate who first identified the leaf warblers by their songs? Us. Where did David Lack do his classic field study of the robin? Us. Where was the first British bird observatory established? What is a fresh... It was obvious that there was something wrong. I mean, she wasn't focused. Her eyes were wandering all over the place. I didn't know why. I do now. No, it's a species which... Obviously, I was disappointed that I hadn't done better, that I had, in a sense, let many people down. But in the spirit of the old Viking sagas, one can always turn defeat into victory by attitude. I always felt it was a, a tragedy of almost Homeric proportions. This brilliant girl with everything in front of her should have walked it and didn't. She was the greatest champion we never had. So, coming up in part three, we've got lots more laughs. Uh, Matthew Kelly finally freaks out. But before the break, two reporters from opposite sides of the Atlantic who pushed things a tad too far. To kick things off, a man who was on his own and had the brilliant idea of setting up his camera in the middle of a deserted railway track. 
three, two, one. The railroads helped build the North State, bringing growth and industry on these railroad tracks. But what the companies were doing was pushing north through Marysville, Chico, and Redding, linking California with the Pacific Northwest. Now, from trains to planes, an automobile guru, Jeremy Clarkson. Fantastic, there's a whole bunch of G there, my trousers exploded. And we're just going straight to the heavens, banking over now. Got them upside down, and oh, it's hard to tell which bloody way up I am. Four starts, I'm in over here. I enrolled, just from a stick to show. Let's watch 18,000. Push a stick. I'm doing this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm flying. I just went upside down. I did a roll! And in a 15, I did a roll! Whoa, here we go. There's some G. Oh, there's a lot of G. Oh. And as Kerry flies in one direction, his lunch decides to go in another. Flight meal, Mr. Clarkson. <laughs> now, the film reunites many of the original cast, including John Cleese. I'm sorry about this. John Cleese and Michael Haley. Um, they were here tonight, along with dozens of other celebrities and stars, and we spoke to those on their way to the popcorn stands, and we'll hear from John in particular a little later. Now, everybody has taken their seats inside the cinema, the Empire over there. Uh, the press pens are coming down, and the red carpet rolled away. But I have to say that it has been easily the biggest premiere of the year so far, and it's not surprising, given the hype... <laughs> It has, bits have had to be recut and reshot. Now the film, that's not the best of drunk people on Leicester Square, so I apologise for those as well. It's getting more comical than fierce creatures down here. Hi, welcome back. Now, the reason you can hear me so clearly is because of this, a microphone. A simple piece of technology, but in the wrong hands, can trigger all sorts of TV nightmares. Uh, we've got a group of the finest... OK, you've heard of dueling banjos. Just watch and, the uh, dueling yeah, microphones in the foreground. No one was injured, and, uh, <laughs> and the hostage situation came to a successful to Then the guys forget all about sound and try to punch each other's lights out. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. This is the Indian Parliament, a cradle of reason, debate, and democracy in Asia. Approaching the microphone, the learned speaker to impart his wisdom. Unfortunately, the MPs think he should stick his wisdom up his Kyber. And instead of exchanging words, they start to exchange microphones. Table of motion, one guy motions a table. <laughs> There's only ever one thing to do when you're losing the argument run like hell. <laughs> this is Aussie tycoon Alan Bond, who has his own delicate way of handling difficult questions. Mr. Bond? <laughs> Big 
television shows of the 80s was Game for a Laugh, which launched the careers of these four presenters. Remember this. And the hosts on Game for a Laugh are Henry Kelly. <laughs> Jeremy Beadle. Sarah Kennedy. That was the very first Game for a Laugh, which saw Matthew Kelly being pushed onto the set in a wheelchair. What was that all about? <laughs> Here to tell all, please welcome the biggest star of stars in their eyes, the guy that always plays himself and never wins, the one and only Matthew Kelly! <laughs> Thank you. Tonight, tonight's Matthew <clears throat> Kelly appearing live. You are gonna wish you hadn't come. <laughs> <laughs> now, so what was that all about, being pushed onto the set there on the very first Game for a Laugh? That Game for a Laugh was done uh, in this very studio 18 years ago. I can't believe it's that long, can you? Well, the, re the only reason that I got that job was that I was doing a show called Punchline Trite, right? yeah. and the man who was producing the show said to me one day while we were doing the show, if I asked you to jump out of an airplane, would you? And I said, yes, because I'll say anything to get a job, right? Yeah, and then, of course, <laughs> we made the show, and I had to jump out of the airplane, and I broke my leg doing it. Yeah. Ooh. This leg. Oh, do you want to see my lumps? I've got lumps all the way up there, because I broke it in about 14 places, right? Ooh. Yeah. I was just showing off, really. But in actual fact, the, when I actually broke my leg, it wasn't for the show. It was, uh, I'd done the, the two jumps I had to do for the show. I was just larking about and I wasn't supposed to be there and I had no insurance and no cover and I shouldn't have been there. I'd been told not to go. So I was lucky not to be sacked and sued. Now, even after Game for a Laugh, you weren't out of danger because you, you then did a show called You Bet. Yeah. And the danger continued. Should we take a look? Yeah, do. Let's have a look at this. Yes, good luck. Good luck, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. OK, yes. Well, this is it, really, isn't it? Well, it's too late to go back, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> first time you did that, is it? No, that was actually the second time. They made me do it again because the first time... You know how they get the, uh, the, the shot of me, uh, the, the view of us going down the bobsled run? Well, that was the, the Norwegian national team that, right. who took me down there. And the, the, the equipment for that was rammed somewhere between us because, you know, you're stuck in what looks like a suppository, really, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was rammed somewhere around my nether regions. And, uh, and of course, the vibration killed the machinery stone dead. So we got to the end of that and they said, I'm terribly sorry, we haven't got any other shots. Will you do it again? Well, <laughs> no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you see, when you know what's coming, because that showed those forfeits, everything. We had to do wing walking, had to do all kinds of things. Oh, I, I know you've got another one off that show. I know <laughs> you have. I just remember what you yeah, got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because not all the forfeits on that show were scary, of course. No, there was no, one no. where you not so much lost your bottle, but lost your dignity. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. <laughs> down to the ground, OK. And back to the salt. Is that it? Back to the salt. <laughs> Come on! Nerves of steel. Is that, 
Was that loincloth as tight as it looked? Well, actually, the real nightmare was the hairdo, really, wasn't it? Yeah, it was The loincloth was uh, not as unpleasant as I'd expected, actually. Yeah. I can highly recommend it. It was a kind of weekend thing, obviously. You know. <laughs> well, listen, you're a top man and a lovely guy. Can you please say thank you to Mr Matthew Kelly, everybody? <laughs> There is a god of television, a part, of course, from Andy Peters. You've got to pray he's always on your side whenever you're on screen, but for these guys, it must have been his day off. Certainly was for this guy, who was just flying around the Austrian Alps, taking in the scenery and minding his own business. Finally, my thanks to Hugh Smith of Holt and Kay Colson of Fordham Heath Colchester for sending me these little and large bottles with uh, impossible nails and screws through pieces of wood to further tantalise my brain on how they did it. Oh! Ah. <laughs> how many Jacksons were there in the original Jackson group? Was it A, 5, B, 6 or C, 7? There you are. How many people were there in the original Jackson 5's fat, fat chicken? <laughs> I... This is a great setup, isn't it? Yeah, it seems to work. <laughs> Take the occasional plunge in the pool, then come over to the spa. Drop in the spa. And you can Not... look out on the estate. Wander down there and here. Save the man! Save the man! Save the camera, save the camera. Are you right, mate? Did it hurt you Now, we've all been there. You're at a family gathering or with guests at home and the dog starts getting amorous with your leg. Now, that may be acceptable in certain areas of rural New Zealand, but on camera, it's a guaranteed TV nightmare. How do you on earth do you choose them? Uh, well, in a sense. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Cloning enables scientists to get these valuable genes into animals much more rapidly. <laughs> Something we're all faced with from time to time is meeting a dog that we don't know. And they're not all as friendly as Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Now, reflected in the window, you can see a lovely, fluffy, innocent bunny rabbit. Selection of horrors will appeal to all true TV Nightmares fans. They prove beyond a doubt that the essence of a real nightmare is this. You might not fully understand them, but you sure as hell remember them. This is a Japanese entertainer performing the biggest gig of his life during the interval of a wrestling match in Turkey. Oh, they like that oriental breakdancing. <laughs> The second biggest no-no in Turkey is public nudity, but for some strange reason, the biggest no-no is showing a drumstick up your bottom. But sadly, we can't show. <laughs> now, we see the long arm of the law at work. <laughs> and the once adoring chants of the crowd have changed to, roughly translated, Kill him! Kill him! <laughs> At which point the Japanese TV director can only apologise by, roughly translated, please don't kill us, we'll put the drumstick somewhere else next time. We <laughs> stay on the charge, FC Smith holds him up. In goes Pete Bester, will Martins get it again? Five. FC Smith does lovely skills, as you mentioned. The tackle the nice tackle. Who knows what could have happened? This isn't great stuff for rugby, but it is an amazing. Look at that lovely little dummy by FC Smith. And then unbelievably, there's the streaker getting in on the tackle. Well, he'll know he's run into an enormous medal. <coughs> okay. 
I'm ready. Most times it takes a lot to make a professional lose it, but sometimes it takes nothing at all. Owners Association head Ian McNiven has now lodged a formal complaint claiming two police officers illegally entered his Queensland property on Sunday and tried to interrogate him. Mr McNiven joins us now. Mr McNiven, good morning and can you tell us what happened yesterday? Well I was just in my pyjamas enjoying the peaceful uh, enjoyment of my home when these people came past the locked gate and past the, the sign that said no unauthorised entry and uh, attempted to interrogate me in my own home. Did you have a firearm with you at the time? No. No, I was in my pyjamas. The only, the only uh, weapon I had with me was my short arm. <laughs> my, uh, my stalk. <laughs> uh, the gentleman said, uh, said that, uh, you know, uh, that, that they'd tell everyone they'd seen me in my pyjamas. So uh, that incensed me somewhat. So I climbed up on the veranda rail and dropped my pyjamas and shouted to them, I don't care if you tell everyone in the world that I've got a small dick. <laughs> because it, uh, with all the fear and harassment, it had shrunk back to nothing. Well, um... <laughs> obviously, that, obviously that frightened them off anyway. Yeah, one, one look at that and I tell you what, they turned and walked off down the, down the drive. That's what actually won the debate. Well, um, Ian McNiven, I, I guess there's a moral here somewhere. You've proved that something's mightier than the sword anyway. <laughs> A big thank you to Agro, Melinda Messenger and Matthew Kelly for being such great sports and to all the other artists who featured in our Hubble Bubble of Toil and Trouble. Until the next time, let us have the nightmares and you sleep well. I'm Steve Payne. Good night, everyone. Sylvester Stallone is the demolition man in our movie blockbuster on the way tonight at 10.20. He's been keeping audiences on their toes for the last 40 years. <laughs> Loved and adored by everyone. What's his name? Freddy who? Who? What's he do? Freddy who? Freddy who? Is he funny? Freddy who? Freddy who? Freddy who? 40 years of Freddy Star. Ah, I'm never heard of him. Next Saturday, 8.55, ITV. Don't forget to miss it. Coming up after the break, the latest ITV weekend news. My tummy went over and I said to my friend, who is that boy? How are you, Frank? You all right? Very Londoner and very loud. From the day I signed him, he was an actor. Everybody says that my eyes are the same. But if I've got something to communicate to him, I'll send them by email, then have a conversation about it. He's actually made a record, did you know that? And it's terrible. <laughs> He's a very good loser. The door used to come off the hinges when we got beat. He is competitive at everything, sir. I wouldn't count an Oscar out. There's no possible way I can see that. We will speak on the telephone at least eight times a day. And that's wherever we are. History is made. Here's your coffee. Thanks. This is their year. The UEFA Champions League. It matters. See it all only with On Digital. Don't miss a single game. Get your free box today. Bien, bien. Bien, bien. Yummy chocolate flavored BN. Puts a smile on your face. Bien, bien. 
On digital is the only place to see every single UEFA Champions League match. So how do you get on digital? Go to your local electrical retailer, pick up your free set dot box, take it home, plug it in, and install it yourself. And now you're ready to see the best of Britain against the best teams in Europe. Oh, no! You forgot the pizzas! The UEFA Champions League. It matters. Don't miss a single game. The sort of person you can't help disliking. But would he murder his own wife? No one would want to kill Tara. John Nettles is investigating new mysteries. We found a body in the woods. Midsummer murders. Suspicious. <laughs> That'll take the smile off his face. With guest stars Robert Hardy. You can commit murder in this part of the world and still get away with it. Imelda Staunton. It's not wrong to sin. But in the country, anything goes. ITV, Sunday at 8.30. A new series of Midsummer Murders. Tonight's roller coaster action movie Demolition Man is in 15 minutes following the ITV Weekend News with Andrea Catherwood.